labels can be confusing and a little hard to understand. We're going to help you figure that out today. So the first thing to understand is that the label on your pesticide product is a legal document. It's not a suggestion. You really need to follow the guidelines on the document because you're responsible for the applications you make or if there's any harmful effects when you're making a pesticide application. We're going to talk about how to protect yourself, how to protect your kids and pets, how to protect the environment, and how to make a good application so that you get control of the pest that you're trying to control. The first thing to look at on a label are the environmental hazard restrictions. Many pesticides are very toxic to fish and other aquatic wildlife. So most pesticides are going to have restrictions for applications to water or to areas where there's standing water, like ditches. It's also important to understand that you don't want to make an application just before there's a rain, because rain can easily move products off of the site and into surface water. And remember, water that goes into storm drains goes directly to surface water. Again, creeks, lakes, and streams. It doesn't go to a treatment plant. It's not treated in any way. So any pesticides or chemicals that are pulled off of the landscape in rainwater and runoff go directly to surface water and can cause fish kills and other adverse effects. It's also important to minimize drift when you're making applications. And so look for weather conditions on the day that you want to spray. The wind speed should be between 3 to 10 miles per hour and no higher to prevent drift and particles from moving off of your landscape onto uh, adjacent properties. Also, another good way to minimize drift is to make sure that the tip of the nozzle when you're making a lip liquid application is very close to the plant material that you're spraying and not farther up in the air. Another way to protect the environment when you're making applications is to minimize the total amount of product that you're using. So if you have a few dandelions in your lawn that you need to kill, make spot applications to those specific dandelions and don't do a broadcast application over the whole lawn. You're really going to minimize the amount of a, a product that you put out into the environment when you make spot applications. So it's going to save you time and money and help protect the environment. We also want to make sure that we protect bees when we're making any type of pesticide application. In fact, many products now have specific restrictions on the label which give you guidelines on how to protect pollinators. These include when you make the application, not making application to blooming plants, and then also some plant species are completely restricted. For this imidacloprid product, no applications can be made to linden, basswood, or any tree in the tilia species because the flowers that those trees produce are very, very attractive to bees and bees can pick up the chemical through the nectar and the pollen that they eat as well as through direct application um, over their bodies if you're making a contact application. So you also need to think about how to protect yourself when you're making an application. And the most important thing to look for on the product label is personal protective equipment. So what do you need to wear to protect yourself when you're making an application? Typically, you're going to need to wear a long sleeve shirt, long legged pants, shoes and socks, and chemical resistant gloves. But if, but if additional restrictions are on the label for eyewear, uh, be sure to follow all of those guidelines. Also look at the label to see if there's a certain amount of time that has to pass before people can go, people or pets can go back onto the treated area again. This is called a restricted entry interval. And oftentimes with a lot of homeowner labels, the restriction is to keep people and pets off the area until the product has dried. Pesticide labels contain a lot of information and it's really important that you read and understand all of the information before you make an application. And remember, pesticide labels change from time to time. So even if you've used a product in the past, before you use the new product that you purchased, read the label again, see if there's any changes and follow all the guidelines that are listed on that label.